All right, this is Mr. Anderson from Kellogg Community College, and we're going to be looking at our ninth video for the chapter, or sorry, the uh, Math 121 final exam review. All right, in this uh, ninth video here, we're going to take a look at some problems from chapter six and seven. We're going to start off by dividing using long division and synthetic division. So I'm going to show you both. Uh, you may have one, only one of these on the actual uh, final exam. And you'll note that actually these uh, are in descending power, which is kind of nice. Uh, that way you don't have to leave any spaces. For example, if I had maybe x cubed plus 2x plus 7, I would have to leave a space between the x cubed and the 2x because the x squared is missing. So I would go back and review some of those problems that had um, zeros uh, as spacers in the problem. But let's just do long division right here. Uh, we'll do long division first, so this is going to be x squared plus 5x plus 8, and on the other side we have x plus 3. Now this is a binomial, so we start two terms from the left, so we're going to start writing right here. And we have to think, what would we multiply by our x to make x squared? Well, that would be just x. So x, and we're going to take this x now, multiply by this binomial, and put it right under here. So x times x plus 3 is x squared plus 3x. And then what we are going to do now is um, subtract both of these uh, and make sure to subtract this and this term. So you do get 0 there, and this makes 2x. We bring down the 8. So now what I'm going to do is decide, what am I going to put here to multiply by my x to make it 2x? Well, the answer there is 2. So 2 times x is 2x. 2 times 3 is 6. Again, we subtract both of these here. So we're left with a remainder of 2. Now it's important to remember how to write your answer because we have to write whatever our um, divide, uh, what we have, we got from multiplying this times this to make this. But our remainder is two, and we write that over the fraction of x plus three. So x plus two plus two over x plus three is my final answer. Now if we're going to rock synthetic division, uh, it's a little different. We have to take the opposite value of what's inside here and mark that down. And the reason why is because this, um, this x plus 3, if we set it equal to 0, x would be equal to negative 3. So that's why we choose the opposite value, the what's inside here. And then we write down our coefficients of our problem, 1, 5, and 8. Now, it's very important to know both of these methods, because whichever one I ask for on the final, if I don't give you a choice, you have to basically perform that one. So the 1 drops down, and then we multiply the negative 3 times 1, which makes negative 3. We add these two up, which makes a total of 2. 3 times negative 2 makes uh, negative 6. And then we add this up, and this is our remainder. Now, this is not just the way you leave the answer. You have to write your answer um, like you would over here. So this would be x plus 2 plus 2 divided by x plus 3. And again, where that came from is the x plus 2 came from this idea of dropping the 1 so this is one less power than x squared. So this is our x plus 2 right here. And then this is our numerator of our remainder, x plus 3, because that's what we were dividing in the original problem there. Again, one of these will be asked on the test, or if I give you your choice, pick the one you like to do the best. And whichever that method isn't, you should probably practice that in case I don't. All right, let's do a story problem. Now this is going to be a distance equals rate times time problem, and one of the giveaways of that is on the test or the final exam, you would see a 3x3 three three grid. And so this makes distance equals rate times time. And another way to know it is because of all the, um, all the, the things that the problem is talking about. It's talking about speed and distance and time between the A train and the E train. We're supposed to find the speed of each train, so we're trying to find the rate of each one. Now it says the, the A train goes 12 miles an hour slower than the E train. So there's E train's rate, and here's A train's rate. Then it says the A train travels 230 miles in the same time that the E train travels 290 miles. Now these are the same times, so what we should do is set those you know, equal to the same T. Now my first suggestion after do, filling out the table here is to um, write the equation. So I got 230 is equal to x minus 12, and I've got 290 equals x. 
but these are both multiplied by t. Notice that these are multiplied by t. So what I'm going to do is, again, in the second step of these problems, I'm going to ask you to solve for t. Now what that's going to do, um, let's kind of move over a little bit to the right here with an arrow. If I divide both sides by x minus 12, I get 230 over x minus 12 is equal to t. And over here, I've got, again, uh, dividing both sides by x, 290 divided by x is equal to t. All right, so what this makes here is, um, since this is equal to t and this is equal to t, due to the transitive property, 230 over x minus 12 is equal to 290 over x. Because again, if this is equal to t and this is equal to t, then they are equal to each other. So I'm going to do some cross multiplication or clearing the denominator. I've been clearing the denominator in each of my previous videos, so if those of you who are familiar with cross multiplying, um, you can go ahead and do that. But in clearing the denominator, you multiply both fractions by the lowest common denominator, and you get some cross, or you get some simplification here. So I get my 230x, and I get my 290 times the quantity of x minus 12. So 230x is equal to 290x minus, and it's probably time to get the calculator out here, so let's pop that open. Uh, 290, oops, let's see here. Can't seem to get the window open, of course, since I'm writing here. So let's remember this, because I'm going to now erase this and bring this back. So we got 230, 290, all right, so here's what happens when I do that. So 230, 290, so 290 times 12 is 3480. So 230x is equal to, sorry, 290 x, ah, hold on, x, minus 3480. Now what I'm going to do is subtract both sides by 290, x, and what that gives me is it gives me negative 60 x is equal to negative 3480. Now remember this quickly because I'm going to have to get rid of this to go back to my calculator. And I'm going to actually just take my 3480 and divide it by 60. Uh, and I'm going to do that because two negatives make a positive. So here we go. 3480 divided by, oops, negate. Ah, let's clear that out. 3480 divided by 60. 58. So the answer to the problem is that the E train, since we knew that was X, is going to be 58. And the A train goes 12 miles per hour slower, so that's going to be 58 minus 12, which is going to be 46. So there's my two answers to the problem. Now let's warp a little bit into Chapter 7, and you may want to watch this video and the one right after it, because it's going to be pretty nice to see all of these power rules um, kind of shown in one, uh, one swoop tonight. So what we have here is perform the following operation, the square root of A to the 14th power. Now what I'm going to do to show that is I'm going to show inside out uh, or the inside over the index. So this is really a to the seventh power. Because we normally don't write the two in the corner of a square root, but that's how you would um, simplify the problem. And uh, this is just a, a problem that tests your knowledge of uh, your radicals here. Here's another one. Uh, this is a power to power rule which means that you can rewrite the problem as x cubed times or raised to the one fourth power and y cubed raised to the one fourth power. I'll do that to show you what I mean. Okay, you can do this. Some of you might actually do the problem without doing this. And then what you do is you multiply these two together. So 3 over 1 times 1 fourth and 3 over 1 times 1 fourth. So this gives you... Um, Oh man, I, I didn't read the directions carefully enough. 
Because what I was going to do is I was just going to write here, okay, this is x to the 3 fourths, and this is y to the 3 fourths. But it says convert to radical form, which means all I want to do is get rid of this fractional exponent and turn it into a radical, which I can easily do as the fourth root of x cubed, y cubed. Wow, that problem was a lot easier than I was making it. So that's, that's one for showing you a, a careful reading. Um, problem 36, you're supposed to combine these two, and since you're under the same radical, you can totally do this as 30ab. One thing you should look at is you should look at it, can I simplify this any further? 30 can't be divided by 4, can't be divided by 9, can't be divided by 16 or 25. So that really is your answer when you combine these two. Um, I'm going to move the screen down a little bit here for 36 and 37, as we're going to be simplifying these. Okay, now when you simplify them, what we have here is the square root. And that means we have the square root of 36, the square root of a to the fourth, and the square root of b. Now the square root of 36 is 6. The square root of a to the fourth is a squared. And the square root of b, well, can't be simplified anymore. And we will be pretty much expecting this answer. We don't expect you to consider positive and negative results because on uh, some, uh, some professors may say, well, you can't always assume that when you take an even root problem that you would have just the positive results. So if, you know, ask your professor about that, if they really care about the plus minuses on problems that aren't stated, whether you have to consider the positive or negative roots. But um, again, you can split this problem up like we'll do for number 37. This is the cubic root of 32, the cubic root of x to the fifth, the cubic root of y to the sixth, and the cubic root of z to the tenth. You may do this problem without showing this much work, but I really want to talk about this here because we got to see if we can simplify all these. And we'll start off with the cubic root of 32. Now, what might be good to remember is that um, 2 cubed is equal to 8. So I can break up this into the cubic root of 8 and the cubic root of 4. And uh, that would then make two cubic roots of four. Now we'll see if we can do any other kind of breaking things up throughout this problem and see how it goes from here. Now the way that I taught this um, is to show that the cubic root does fit into x to the fifth. So three goes into five once with two left over. Now if that actually went a little bit fast because you weren't one of my students in my class, another way to think about it is that this is x to the five thirds. And x to the 5 thirds is another way of saying x and x to the 2, th uh, x to the, um, two thirds, because this is 1 plus 2 thirds, which is 5 thirds. Now, that can be written as x to the um, x times the cubic root of x squared, um, which is the same thing as x raised to the 2 thirds power inside out. Now, this one's a lot easier because the cubic root of y to the 6 is just y squared. And again, if you need to write that out, this would be y raised to the 6 thirds power. And finally, this is 3 going into 10 3 times, so this is z cubed, with 1z left over in the cubic root. Again, another way to write that would be um, z to the 9 thirds and z to the 1 third. And the z to the 9 thirds became z cubed, z to the 1 third became the cubic root of z. So let's now actually compact what we have here. The, the numbers and letters that are outside of the cubic root is the 2, the x, the y squared, and the z cubed. So this is 2, x, y squared, z cubed. Now what we have here is the cubic root 4, the cubic root of x squared, the cubic root of z. So we have an answer attached to it with multiplication, but we usually don't put the dot there, of 4x squared z. Whew, that's the end of that. I would strongly recommend that you keep watching uh, for video uh, number 10 uh, and you know make sure you check it out and see what uh, see how it goes. All right, well thank you for watching.